Greetings, adventure. You're listening to the D20 Academy podcast. I'm Shiloh. And I'm Gabriel, and welcome to our very first episode of Game Forge, a series where we take an idea and turn it into a tabletop role playing game in a single episode. All right, we're really looking forward to this episode. It's going to be a fun one. Before we get into it, as always, follow us on Instagram at d20 underscore academy. You can message us there or comment on one of our posts to get into our Discord, where we talk about all sorts of nerdy stuff. You can get in contact with us, ask us questions, give us suggestions, things like that. It's a great place to be. Yeah. Get into there. But before we go, shallow some stuff to say. Uh huh. But about our Discord, we've we've been getting into some interesting convos about our last episode about Mandalorian, which has been a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so people who disagree with us, which we love, and we want to have those conversations. And I'm sure many of you will have your own uh, thoughts and opinions on this episode as well. So jump into the Discord. Let's have some conversations. It's a lot of fun. Um, hey, guys, we also have a YouTube channel, just D20 Academy. And uh, all our podcast episodes and things are posted onto there, as well as our actual play series, which is on this podcast where we're listening to this as well. Uh, Friends Like These, it's set in the Star Wars universe, it uses Fantasy Flight Games Star Wars system. We have four, by the time you're hearing this, I believe four sessions out. Um, It's really a lot of fun, so go listen to that if you you haven't already. And also, on YouTube exclusively, uh, I'm releasing a series uh, teaching you how to play the Star Wars system, um, which a lot of people are finding helpful, and uh, so that's, that's really cool. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check that out. All right, to start us off, I think we should probably go through some of the things we like about tabletop role-playing games that we have seen in other tabletop role-playing games, or just of the nature of tabletop role-playing games that we want to see culminate into one singular game that we had yeah. hypothetically I, I think that there's a lot of like conceptual thi- like really big picture conceptual things that we need to figure out first. Uh, by the way, this is kind of a more subjective episode. Like, We're not trying to build the greatest role-playing game, we're trying to build the one that w- the two of us would like the most. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, for example, like, most likely, we're probably gonna lean more on, like, a more complex side. Like, more complex than 5th edition or whatever. But that doesn't mean that complexity is, is better or whatever. Like, every game, every RPG, like, has its own place and its own audience and stuff, so. That's one thing to note. Um, uh, also, like, yeah, big picture stuff with the think about just off the top of my head I was thinking about this was like do we want to create a blanket system you know like Genesis or GURPS or whatever or like a that's something we definitely have to discuss you know like a genre specific system and stuff like that hmm. that's it that is the <laughs> extent of what I've my, my pre-thoughts about this this episode alright so I'm down for either. I think that there's merit to both. I, for this instance, I would lean towards more genre specific. I, I think I would agree with you there. Also helps us focus a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Which uh, uh, we might I'll, need. Yeah. Also, by the way, we're not like creating a whole RPG in this episode, and we're not. So we're not gonna be diving into like nitty gritty rules and stuff. Just by the way. If, if you guys like this episode, let us know. Maybe we'll actually like do a series where we try to build it. But uh, for now, this is like much more. <laughs> we're doing years things. of R&D in one hour. Yeah, we're going to play. We're going to even get to the point. 40 minutes in, we'll have enough rules to play test. Uh, no. no. That's not true. I mean, where do we even start? Is the question. Because, first of all, like, we don't have any ideas. Cause like I've never me and Gabe, anything. um, we're we're creators by nature. We like to take things that we like and then create things. Um, we're like oh D and D's fun, like, but I want to create my own world, or I actually want to create my own system. Um, we're those kind of people <laughs> who aren't just happy just consuming <laughs> the media we have to create it as well. Um, and so we have tried creating RPGs before, um, but usually that starts with like an idea we have, you know. Yeah, like we uh, read or watch or experience some sort of story or something that makes us inspired to be able to tell stories like that in a unique way and unique system. So like, oh, let's make something to fit that idea or to make something to be able to play that out in a tabletop role-playing game setting. 
like a singular mm -hmm. like idea that inspires us. But here we're kind of yeah, like, like jumping in. Yeah. For example, me and my friend were like, we love post-apocalyptic stories um, and stuff and zombies, because <laughs> who doesn't? And so like, we want to create an RPG system for that, because um, there's really not a lot of good ones out there, or the one ones that we want to play, like that we like. Um, and so like that was an idea that like we're building around. So like the system's built around those survival aspects and things like that. Um, yeah. Whereas right now, like we don't we don't have like a singular piece of inspiration that we're trying to work off of. So I guess we start with like things we like and things we don't like, and like what we, what we want in a, a system and kind of work from there. Hmm. And then maybe like that will point us towards like a genre, maybe. All right. All right, I can start since I have yeah. a semi list of things. All right, so I put together a list of things that I'd like to carry over from different role-playing games if I was to make one of my own, which I'd started to make some progress on, but never really did anything with it because I leave projects all the time. All right, so some important things is obviously dice system that's an important thing how do you add that randomness to decide if something succeeds or fails I'm personally yeah, a big fan of a d20 system I just like d20s they're pretty <laughs> it's like mathematically it has a lot of variance which is weird at times I'm just a fan of it and like the fan of like the feel of d20s even though yeah. okay I, I I have things to note on dice systems should we get into that now or do you want to finish your list first I we can get into that now it's fine okay okay so I too I like d20 system it's very um what's that word it's easy to pick up intuitive mm -hmm. um it's pretty intuitive uh this the math is very simple like you add things or minus things to the number you get and you're trying to get above a certain number. You know, like, it's just whether to succeed or fail or hit or miss, right? Like, it's just nice and, and simple. And 20 is just a good range of numbers. It's not so small that, like, luck is minimized, and it's not so big that, like, nothing matters. Or, like, you know, like, everything is crazy off the charts, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, you know, if, if it's, like, imagine a D and d and all the numbers and stuff are the same, except you roll a D100, right? Like, everything would be so crazy. Like, the scale of being able to hit or miss would be, like, so out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It'd be uh, so drastic. The other day, I saw a post someone made, like, a custom D50. I don't even know how you do that. A custom D50 yeah, for like, a game that they were making. And I'm like, what? That's pretty, that's pretty cool. Um, but... As, as good and nice and solid as D20s are, uh, that system is, it, I don't know what I'm trying to say, it means that like, okay, so you know the Genesis system, the Star Wars system, that's a system that uses all different kinds of sides of dice to resolve problems, and instead of numbers it uses symbols, like success symbols and failure symbols, and then also all these extra symbols called advantages that are positive and threats that are negative and every time you make a check or an attack or whatever you can spend these extra things regardless of success or failure to do extra things like critical hit or activate weapon qualities or uh, give the next person a bonus or uh, fall prone or you know trip over or whatever it is or your gun jam stuff like that and it adds this like extra two dimensions to every role and makes things much more like customizable and gives everything a lot more choices and I really really like that about that system because in D&D weapons you know kind of have some like basic traits and then just like deal damage right but in that game like weapons deal damage they can also have the capability of setting people on fire or exploding or stunning people or like all this kind of stuff and they all have, uh, they can all be, they can all be damaged or destroyed, and all that kind of stuff, which I really like, and it makes combat much more fun, in my opinion. So I, what I think you're trying to say is that by having these other symbols, it gives an opportunity for actions and weapons to do more than just 
deal damage. It doesn't have to yeah. have this own spe specific uh, resource pool that it pulls from to do these things. It's built into the dice roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it just adds variety. That's just really nice. But yeah. co more complex, of course, but yeah, nice. I agree. I agree. I quite like that part of it. I am just a sim for D20s. I don't know. <laughs> it's something about them that just makes me feel nice. Like I just woke Safe. up in yeah. a high fantasy world in a magical garden or something. Like, ah, oh, D20s. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what that meant, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. I mean, I, I sleep with my D20 at night. Do you do, like... Oh, yeah, of course. Like a stuffed animal. Yeah, okay. A stuffed no, animal I, is just I, I use my solid metal ones, obviously. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I use my plastic ones. There's, I actually sleep on a bed of D20s. I don't know if you, I don't know, if you know this, but um, mm -hmm. it's actually just like a big Lego bucket. But instead of Legos, it's D4s. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it, <laughs> So I get acupuncture treatment and also sleep <laughs> at the same time. Um, it's just D20s. So, uh, you know how, like, people would have, like, a race car bed when they were a kid? Yeah. Yeah, it mine's just a big D20. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> uh, Imagine nice. having a dice addiction so bad, you could, you could like, make a bed out of your, all your D20s. <laughs> or Bailey. Okay, sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, so, that was my note on, uh -huh. on a dice uh, system. On dice, yes. Yeah, so there's two sides of that. Well, it was more just 20, but... Nice. Nice. <laughs> we can decide that more later. Just thoughts for now. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> All right. I think we can both agree that we like classes. We don't need a classless system. I mean, well, uh, I'm down I mean, okay. for it. I mean, like, I like classes. <sighs> that is another thing to discuss is character creation as a whole. Mm -hmm. Like, do you go with a classic race class combination kind of deal? You know, I mean, depending on the setting, it could be like species and, you know, color or whatever. But yeah, I don't really care. But like, there's always that kind of combo. You know what I mean? Or like, I mean, there's there's definitely other stuff as well. And that's also something to be talked about. Dang, guy, guys, there's only one of you. There's RPGs, there's, there's so much of them. Okay. There's so much. There's, there's a lot of there's jump so into. much. Yeah, okay, so character creation. Character creation. Right. I like the typical, you know, like, background ancestry slash race or whatever, what have you, career. I think it's pretty cool. I also have no qualms with classless systems. I just think that classless systems lend itself to spending more time in character creation if you're going for if you're going for the class system with a scale of like the class ability if you're trying to fit like all the class abilities that you would get in a typical tabletop role playing game into a classless system then it means that there's so many more choices than with a classless system and more choices uh, me. I'm is confused a little bit. okay okay I'm, I'm saying like all right, a classless system where you're kind of like building your own class, piecing things together to make your own character your own way without sticking to like a class like template or what have you. Oh, oh I, I, I see, I see, I see. So more like a like a like a perk tree, like Skyrim yes, kind of concept yes. versus like D and D fifth edition, like you choose a class. Yes. Got it. I. And which one are you saying that you like? I'm not saying like either. I'm saying. I personally like classes. It makes things a little more orderly and helps balance things. You can balance things. It's only these people who choose this class are going to have the, this ability. So you don't have to worry about its interaction with that ability yet. Unless you and it's, drink, it's like, also easy to hop into because you have a defined role. Yes. Sure and we've, I think we've talked about this before in previous episodes about like your role within a party as both a player and as a character and how that can be integral to a party dynamic and to telling a story. Yeah, I agree. But I do like skill trees. Hmm. 
<laughs> there's two sides to everything. You know what I mean? Or 20, mm. you know. Or 20. Or t- <laughs> so bad. <laughs> okay, so we got a dice system we got to figure out. I mean, not like the d- ins and outs of it, but, you know, general concept. Yeah. Character creation. I really kind of, like, skipped forward. We skipped past, like, action economy. Well, that's, you know, that's, uh, yeah, sure. Action economy, we also have to figure out. There's so uh, many like, things you know, that go into a role-playing game that you don't really realize no, there's so many you things. jump into it. Yeah, w- which is why we're not going to detail everything, oh, yeah, you no, know what I mean? No. We're but so just like, the... like talking about like preferences right now, I think. This is more an episode of us uh, just... I can't say that phrase. Uh, Theorizing what, like, what yeah. would be awesome. Like, what we want in a game. Without, like, you know, like, if I read the back of your core rulebook, and I'm like, all those bullet points sound awesome and something I want to be a part of but none of the bullet points are like so you roll a d20 you know what I mean like <laughs> it doesn't explain the the details of it you know what I mean but if it's but if it's like a really customizable intuitive skill tree system you know what I mean yeah hmm all right I as far as customize c- customizable and skill tree, class, all that sort of thing. I quite like how it's done in Pathfinder, like second edition, where you choose a class, and a class gives you access to choices. You see an access in that every so often you get to choose from these, this list of things to build onto your character. Yeah, if it's you're not cool. aware, Path- second edition has like, first of all, you get like some, and every like once in a while, you get like a core class feature just like D&D. But then typically like you know, typically each level instead of just getting like another class feature, it's a choice between various features that that you could be a part of, which it still fits within that class and is specific to that class, but is also, you know, allows you to make choices and so that like two people can play rogues and end up with like very different characters with different play styles. Um which is even more so than like D and D's um, subclasses, um, mm-hmm. and there's also, of course, all the like general feats that you can choose from, which are like open to everybody, and are like like skill feats. So like you're better at doing certain things with specific skills. Yeah, uh, second edition is kind of <laughs> big, <laughs> um, but yeah, I agree. I think I think that's that's pretty cool. Okay. Are these kind of like the primary parts of a RPG? I mean, also there's like GMing stuff, like how monsters work and encounter mm-hmm. building and mm-hmm. storytelling and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think we still need to, as far as core things are concerned, we need to figure out how you play the game like what does a turn look like are there turns is it more abstract and it's just a storytelling thing what do you do on your turn what do you have like actions do you have an action economy an action system is yeah. what is dming like yeah <laughs> yeah a lot of stuff mm-hmm. uh okay I think we, we can kind of jump now into, like, a genre, and I think that will be able to point us. Because, like, all the system is... The system is just the the best way that we can come up with of facilitating, like, the kind of story you're trying to tell. Yes. Right? Fifth edition is a great system for telling a heroic, epic fantasy story. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. About a group of heroes becoming... You know, like, gods becoming, like, really superheroes slaying monsters going on quests getting treasure um you know there's a lot of like suspension of like disbelief in like how when you take a eight hour rest all your wounds are healed (laughs) and like it's very you know like actiony action-packed kind of deal whereas you know on the other hand it's not exactly perfectly equipped to tell a nitty-gritty war story of a soldier and, and it's and his battalion going against countless enemies over a long time with survival aspects and yeah or, or like Call of Cthulhu 
Call of Cthulhu, you're supposed to feel always weak and <laughs> very brittle as you're unraveling this mystery of horrors that are greater than yourself. And combat is rare, and it's usually just like so you can fight things long enough to escape. Um, the more you play, the more you spiral into madness instead yeah. of like get more XP and stuff. And so like, and but that is the perfect system for telling that kind of story, you know. So what and story so, like, are we trying to tell? Yeah, yeah, that's that's what, that's what I think we need to figure out because then that is how everything, that's what everything points to. Hmm. I mean, what do you like? <laughs> I like a lot of things. To be fair. Me too. I like a lot of things. Ben and Jerry's. Uh color red blue as well so i i'm just i'm just looking around my room on my brand new spinny chair oh. and uh yeah i got a new desk and a chair they came in the other day and i built them and really congratulations nice. uh my back is not awful now um i'm just looking around my room um which thankfully is filled with lots of inspiration in board games and posters um from wall to wall two things that stand out to me that I, I remember that I really like. Uh, one is I like cosmic horror a lot. Like Alien. Like, I love that stuff. <laughs> I I love cosmic horror even though it's kind of like formulaic or whatever. Like, I just really like fe you, like you feeling like just so alone in space, like in a spaceship and there's like aliens or like there's some kind of coup going on um, or whatever it is. Just, like, a, a, a story that takes place in, like, a very, um, what's it called? Like, a very specific location, like, you can't get out of, you know what I mean? Or, like, The Thing, right? Just a mm. bunch of dudes stuck in this, uh, f you know, a laboratory in this in t icy tundra. You can't communicate with anyone. You can't go anywhere. And there's a monster who's impersonating people trying to kill everybody. Um, I like that. A lot. Um... On the other hand, I love open world, which is the exact opposite. <laughs> and exploration, especially like like sci-fi. Uh, you know, I I love I love like planets and 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 sci-fi space travel, and like all that kind of stuff. I, I love that as well. Um, and then also something that I kind of like is um, like Weird War. I have this game called Scythe. Um, I think you know. I think you played it yes. before, but it's like alternate history. It's like World War Two, but like with mechs. World War One, maybe actually. And so there's like the Russians and the Germans and stuff, but they have like mechs and stuff. I don't know. It's it's kind of it's cool. I don't know how to explain it, but it, it's like a you know like early 1900s like war game, kind of alternate history kind of deal. That's also kind of interesting to me. So basically, everything interests you. Basically, like. everything interests me. But I mean, like, I don't know how many of those kind of RPGs exist. You know what I mean? Because, like, I also like games like D&D, &D, but a ton of those exist. Fantasy, adventure games, you know? So I don't know if that's what we need to build. Hmm. All right. Oh, Sorry. Real quick, one final thing I want to talk, point out is, um, uh, what's it called? Oh, yeah. The concept of, like, questing and adventure. Because in D&D, &D, and I would say the majority of role-playing games, the story is driven by a quest, by some sort of journey and adventure to accomplish some sort of objective. Um, and I feel like it's ho it's harder and it's much rarer to find a game that isn't about that. For example, in when me and my friend are making this post-apocalyptic RPG, we're trying to find out like what kind of stories do you tell? Because there is kind of a, a questy adventure where you can go with it. Hey, they have to travel across the country to get to the safe haven or whatever it is, right? But then there's also like the popular like post the concept of like running a settlement and like that's in one place you know what i mean 
And mm-hmm. story is driven by way different things than, like, you going on adventures and stuff with your friends, like in D&D. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's different stakes, different things that will come up, conflicts. Yeah. And, and I think it matters a lot in, in a role-playing game, like, how that works. All right. So if we go with the first thing that you like with the confined, horror-focused, smaller-scale role-playing game, I think Mm -hmm. that opens up avenues for other ways of telling stories other than just fetch quests and things like that. Which I think are really popular in like video games that are in that genre. Yeah. Or in what genre? Oh, uh, like that sort of confined horror genre. A lot sure, of people playing sure, sure. like, oh, I need to go get this, and then just the ultimate goal is to always escape. Yeah. Or, or solve to, a mystery or whatever. Yes, or to solve a mystery or to kill the thing. And so you go here, yeah. grab this thing, go back. What interesting mechanics can we use to tell a story in that setting? Right. I mean, another thing, though, is, like, you can only be confined in one place for so long. (laughs) Yes. So, like, campaign play versus, like, one-shot play. You know what I mean? Because I love campaigns. I I really love them. Really, like, being able to build over time on characters and their relationships and their relationships to, like, side characters and, and stuff like that. I really like campaigns, and so I think I definitely want to work that into my dream, tabletop RPG for sure. And I don't know how easy that is in a more of a confined, cosmic horror kind of deal, um, but can we figure out a way to do that, you know? I don't know. <laughs> that might just be a limitation of the genre. Of the genre, yeah. Because people don't typically last long in stories like that. <laughs> Either they no. die or the story ends. Yeah, I mean, it feels kind of like Call of Cthulhu, which I feel like those campaigns don't run very long. Because the more you play, the <laughs> more likely the character it will end up dying or going insane or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so, like, those that's for, like, one-shot play or, like, mini campaigns. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. That was just an idea, though. Like, we can work that into whatever we're trying to build. I don't know. Okay, some random things that I, I would like to have in an RPG. Okay. Uh, if if genre appropriate, mass combat, um, some kind of way of like leading armies and like the tactics of that, kind of like a fun mini game of like players like tactically preparing and fighting out mass combat, I think is really cool. Um, like vehicle rules, if 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 once again genre appropriate, like I think that's really fun. Um, figuring out how that works. Um, once again, though, it depends on like the the genre. Yeah. Depending on whether it's what? fitting, I also would like to have things like flexible magic systems if there is a magic system in said role-playing game i Mm. want to see role-playing games that experiment with different magic systems try out different things what works how can you increase the amount of player control how can you increase the amount of options without getting too complicated questions like that i think would be fun to explore if we were to create a role-playing game that fits that. <laughs> yeah, we're both big fans of magic systems, you especially, I know, so yes. I, yes. I love, yes, magic. You love yes, alright. I love yes. <laughs> yes. I don't know, man, what's, what's kind of been inspiring you lately? Hmm. Lately, I've been watching some YouTube videos and I started playing a game called Everspace 2, 
which is like a space RPG, essentially. Quite fun, quite fun. Do recommend it's in early access though. I quite like space. There's a lot of freedom that you have with it. There's so many things you can do with a story that is set in a universe where space travel is possible or accessible. It opens yeah. up to a lot of possibilities of what characters can do and where they can go. I am wondering if we can combine the sort of grandio grandiose vision of space and space travel with something that seems like its entire opposite with your idea of this confined horror theme. I'm wondering if there's um, some sort of mm, perhaps it's a very like narrow niche narrow story niche where we okay. could have both this vast openness of space and the confines of like a single spaceship that the characters right. are all stuck on. Yeah. Like like we're not we're not time jumping for this for space travel. <laughs> like we're playing out like you guys in the ship as people are you know, you run out of resources, the gas tank is leaking, like you have to solve all these problems and stuff like there's an alien on board. There's a traitor on board. You know what I mean? Like, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Just to inject even more ideas that we can mull over. Um, <laughs> I've had an idea for a while. I have no idea how this would work, and I don't even know if this would be good or fun. But, like, the concept of everyone plays two characters. Mm -hmm. well, I think I've told you this before. One is a... You all play high up princes generals rulers of nations uh on, on a on a ruling council or whatever deciding the fate of your nation as you go to war um and like making really big sweeping important decisions and your other character is just like a guy on the ground a soldier within the ranks of the army who's being sent by these higher ups to fight turf wars or you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, kind of um i don't even know if this how this would work or if this would be fun but like if it would be every other session, I have no idea. But, like, you know, like, a group of council members, right? You all play council members in this nation who's at war, and there's... So, like, you're doing half, like, political intrigue like and, like, traitors. Game. Sorry? Like the Game of Thrones game. Yeah, is that how it works? I feel like we looked at it before, and we thought that's how it worked, but it didn't or something. But anyway. <laughs> like, you're all kind of on a council. You don't even know if you can trust each other and stuff. And then you just cut to, like, you're all, like, members of this, like, elite platoon of, like, soldiers. And, you know, they also have their own opinions of, like, the higher-ups and, like, the council and stuff. I don't know. Would that even be cool? I don't know. But <laughs> that'd be interesting. Um, and then um, an, an RP. I've always wanted to do an RPG. The entire system is based around political intrigue and, like, navigating the court. And, like, essentially, if... It's D&D, &D, but instead of six ability skills, like, abilities representing all the different things, it's, like, six charisma things. <laughs> and, like, everything has to do with, like, the subtleties of conversation and, like, lying and, like, deception and all that kind of stuff. Mm. But that's, like, a very niche kind of RPG. That is you know what I mean? Niche. <laughs> anyway, other ideas I'm throwing out there. All right, so this is the image that I have in my mind so far, combining mm -hmm. the things we've talked about. I'm picturing some sort of story. I, I, have, I have an image of like a story, and I'm, I don't know if this works as a role-playing game. Yeah. The image of like a story I have is of this spaceship crew, X amount of people, yep. small amount of yeah, people. Yeah, I think I'm thinking the exact same thing you're thinking. <laughs> you know, they're going through space, but it's not like every planet is populated and occupied. And there's something on the ship, so they have to balance between going to these unknown planets and gathering resources and doing what they need to do to keep the ship up and running so they can get where they need to go, and also have to deal with the fact that there's something on the ship with them, whether it be a traitor or some sort of alien entity or yeah, the AI is gone whack. Yeah. That's the story that I'm imagining. Okay. But then can we splice that 
it, I don't know, once again, this is maybe a stupid idea, but then like, and then you also all play the owners of the corporation who is who sent that team out. Dealing with like all the political and economic problems of like the different like corporations fighting each other and the different like nations. And like, so you have to figure out like, how are you gonna use this team? Do you use them to, do you send them after to assassinate the person? Or is that time better spent going to re recover this resource or whatever? And then you hop to the team actually doing the mission. I think... Is that stupid? I don't know. I think it fits a different game. I don't, it depends on what we're trying to do. I don't think we can combine all of these ideas. Together. No, I agree, I agree. Would be fun though. So, kind of the concept of just like you're the guardians of the galaxy. <laughs> you're a, you're a crew on a on a ship doing stuff, and crew that's on a not. Ship doing stuff. I didn't I didn't say that in like a bad way. Like I like that idea. Mm -hmm. And there are all kinds of problems that you run into because like yeah, you land on planets, and there's problems on those planets like monsters and ancient you know people who have not been discovered yet that you run into. And then on the ship, it's all these different, like another ship is attacking you. A big a space alien is, bes is besieging your ship. There's problems with oxygen levels and you're running out of food. And so it's kind of like this, um, you know what it is actually? It's the sci-fi version of like a pirate story. Hmm. Yeah. Cause like you have to keep like your food in check and your ammunition and your cannons and all that kind of stuff. And you're also, getting you know you like landed at a, at a trade planet and you get hired to go off to a far planet and dig up some lost tr buried treasure and bring it back for your you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like it's like piracy in space all right so the way i'm picturing how this game would work is that instead of having a class like fighter wizard that kind of stuff you would have yeah. like, a role in the ship a role on the ship yes yeah 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 take you like your basic abilities and stuff that you things that fit your role and how do you operate that role and fulfill that role on the ship outside of the ship i haven't figured that out yet but i think the classes quote unquote are the different roles yeah that need to be fulfilled on the ship Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, and, and then I think we do it kind of like Pathfinder, where there are still, like, options. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Within your role. Because, like, you know, like, the mechanic, like, he can or she can become, like, really uh, specialized in, like, being able to, like, repair the hull of the ship. Or, like, be able to fix the systems. Or, like, upgrade the ship's things. Or uh, uh, program a really advanced AI. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things you can do with that role on the ship. Um, and then also, Pathfinder has these things called archetypes, I want to say they're called. Yes. Um, which is their way of subclass, uh, multi-classing. At certain levels, you can, like, gain some, like, core features of, like, another class. For example, I built a rogue, um, but he is, like, a really devout religious rogue, and so I also, like, took a cleric archetype. So he has minor, like, spellcasting cleric spellcasting abilities and stuff um and in the same thing you can do that with this if you have like a smaller party that you can't fulfill every role mm -hmm. you know what i mean that that people can kind of take can major in you know like captain and then like minor in pilot you know what i mean <laughs> if they need to i think that's also i think that's also uh, cool cool i really like this this is really cool um so i think a lot of the what are, what are kind of like the main like themes of this? Because in my in my opinion, it's like resource management. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like always being scarce, and you know what I mean. Yeah. Like always being a threat, I think is pretty important. Um, whether it be like money or food or whatever it is. I am picturing I yeah resource management teamwork when it comes to actual like firefights in space like if everyone has a role then in, then combat should work as the team working together to 
fit their keys in the appropriate locks and turn them as part of one whole team thing so it's not just focus on the pilot and the gunner you know like everyone chips in yeah their part. no 100 100 percent because like for example we've been playing sea of thieves recently and there's not like defined roles in that but like someone kind of always needs to be driving someone should be shooting cannons someone needs to be repairing the shots someone should be like adjusting the sails to catch the wind correctly like you know what i mean mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that you can do to aid for the fight other than just like shooting people you know what i mean yeah Someone can be, like, trying to swim over to the other ship to do something. Um, I was thinking of that in space, and I was like, huh? <laughs> Just swinging through space. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys, I'm, I'm gonna go uh, throw a fireball on them, and he just jumps out into space. Okay. I want to talk about some role-playing things here. What like makes up like a character like is are there like their motivation does everyone like start with a secret um that kind of stuff mm. okay i think that we go with something such as at the start of the campaign one shot what have you you are given like the like a profile like everyone like has a profile on each other you know yeah. you are an assembled crew this is this and some basic things but everyone also has a lie on the profile you know mm -hmm. like a secret like you're playing two truths and a lie, but it's maybe maybe maybe, maybe more truths. Probably more people that go more things that go into a character. <laughs> sure, I, I know what you're saying. So there is something on that character's profile that all other players know must is not true, or is like a twisted truth or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm mm -hmm, in this game, it's it's more of like a. It lasts a couple sessions, you know. This is the way I'm picturing I, I mean, it, I, where it's not like a two and a half year long thing. This is kind I, of like I can a... see it. I can see it being like that. I mean, you know, this crew, like going on adventures, it's kind of like a little D&D &D party. Doing various things. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like there reaches a point where like the deeper character things are all revealed and stuff. Yeah. At that point. Uh, but like, you know, that's like D&D &D or whatever as well. You know what I mean? However, we can probably make it a part of the system in this to lean more heavily into that. I mean, if we do want to go for more of like a a one-shotty mini campaign kind of deal, you could have people get given like secret objectives, like they're supposed to sabotage the ship or you know stuff like that as well. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that does not work for longer campaign, I guess. So let's decide that now. Do we want to keep it more short and contained? Or do we want it to have the opportunity to go for longer? Oh. I mean, can we do both? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we could. But this is all like a hypothetical. What is easier for us in this hypothetical to piece together into something rewarding by well, the end of well, this episode? Well, I, I think the question is more like, what would you want? Because this is our dream, Tabletop RPG. Say someone's already created this. Like, would you, Gabe, in this concept of what we've come up with so far, like, would you rather it be more one-shot mini campaign -y, Or, like, would you rather... I mean... It can. Okay, I think here's what here's my two cents. I guess what I'm thinking right now. Design it mini campaign, but you know obviously it can go longer. Okay, I'm fine with that. We can roll with that. Um, also because um what I found, we at least just in the two of us our experience, we've only been able to hold one campaign that lasts long. You know, like years. Most campaigns, even if they extend over like 
the first few sessions I'll still eventually like fizzle out because of you know various things um, which means that it's not like a ton of even like with D&D like you know what I mean like I feel like only a few actually like last a year and more you know what I mean mm -hmm. and so this lent its hand more to that concept you can even at least tell a completed story Within a shorter Within amount of time. Within that time. Yeah. Also, if character creation is really fun, you want to create a ton of new characters all the time. You know what I mean? Because mm. I love starting a new campaign because character creation is a blast for me. Yeah, and it's so, a lot of fun. There's also many options and things you can do. Yeah, I, and so, like, well, hey, like, yeah, after I, I a couple campaigns. Shorter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, after a couple campaigns, you're like, you're able to try out all the different roles and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which can be fun rather than, like, being stuck with a paladin. Like, well, I guess you can multi-class, but you're basically stuck with a paladin for the next year and a half. You know what I mean? <laughs> and if you don't like the paladin, that's rough. You know what I mean? Um, and a shorter thing, like, okay, I play the captain for, like, eight or so sessions. And it was fun, but, you know, not my thing. Like, then you're not stuck with it. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's not like you have to be like, GM, I kind of want you to cut off my character, or uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Alright, so the way I'm envisioning character creation is you select a role, and then you select, as you're saying, like a minor, and that minor can either be to further establish your niche in that role, or to take over some of the mm, mm, responsibilities mm, mm, mm. of a different role, you know? That's that's good. I like that, I like that, I like that. Like, and you then be I, like an uh, yeah. ace pilot, and you're like further establishing your niche as this ace fighter that's really good at maneuvering through the battlefield and putting yourself in the right position to be able to attack as well as to be able to defend yourself. Or you could be a pilot that also focuses in mechanics. You know? You've yeah, spent yeah. time piloting. You've also spent time repairing your ship along the way. So you have expertise in both. One thing I think, though, is character advancement now is different when we have to figure that out. Because if it's like a mini campaign, like... There's not 20 levels, <laughs> you know? Um, so how would that work? I mean, is there, like, minor character advancement during play, or is there, like, during character creation? It's very customizable so that you can play a mechanic three times and be a different kind of mechanic and feel pretty different every single time, um, which kind of replaces the concept of advancement. Hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I just feel like advancement doesn't feel right or make a lot of sense. Yeah. So maybe the advancement and differences are, come in a different way, in a different form, such as equipment and uh, upgrades to the ship upgrades to your own equipment yeah. that you have on you things like that that's what that's how you get advancement within your contained campaign yeah that that is the other thing that i think many campaigns can be kind of a bummer about is like the concept of really getting your ship awesome just won't happen you know what i mean mhm mm which is kind of sad because i feel like that's like a important part Okay. Huh. Okay, just forgetting the optional longer form campaign rules that we could that that could be possible, right? If we're leaning heavily into this more like one shot 5 or like 5 to 10 session uh story kind of deal. I think the first choice is like choosing like the kind of adventure you're going on. And that also, like, dictates, like, your ship. Yeah. Because, like, if you're, like, going to go to a mining... If you're trying to collect resources, like, you're going to take a big mining ship. Or, like, a different adventure will take, like, a cargo ship. Or, like, a starfighter. You know what I mean? Like... Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I think we also... Because the world... You, you know, we also have to build a world for this. And so, like, also choosing, like, what faction you're from. Maybe that's your race. Uh, the pseudo race or whatever. Um, I do think there should be more options than just your role and your minor role. Um, when it comes to like maybe it's a background or a species or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I personally, I'm not a big fan of 
humanoid aliens. I I like humans, and then aliens are terrifying creatures that want to kill us. Like, you know, I'm not a super big fan of like in Star Wars how there's like Twi'leks and all these other kind of humanoid things running around. It's fine, but I just like humans. <laughs> I feel like I've talked about this before. Um, You've definitely talked about like, how you like humans. I yes. love, I love, I love humans. Even in fantasy stories, like fantasy races, eh. When it's majority human, I like it. Uh, humans are interesting to me. <laughs> well, it's good but because species... they happen to live amongst a lot of humans. Yeah, but species could also be really fun because, like, you could choose like a forearm species, or you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. An aquatic one, which is which is also kind of fun. That can lend its hand to diff solving different kinds of problems. Hmm. Yeah, I if we're telling a, a story set in some sort of space system, some sort of galaxy where space travel is possible, I think you kind of have to. I know you don't you don't no, have you to don't. include like. Other races. Star Star Trek, dude. Oh no, I guess I forgot. Star Trek has the point of your guys. Never mind. Star Trek has a lot of things. Yeah, I forgot. It has the point of your. Oh guys. like. I mean, there are like other humanoids, this... but like they're yeah. enemies. What are they called? Vulcans? Yeah. Whatever. Never mind that. There's others. Sure. And yeah, I'm not. I'm not pissed about that. Species are, are cool. That's fine. As long as they're like not dumb, though. <laughs> of course they're not dumb. Like... So I think we should have a Teletubby. <laughs> like Starfinder, dude, has this like rat race. It's the dumbest thing in the Have world. The <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry if like you play Starfinder and you like that race. Like that's cool. They have like they're like chibis. They have big heads, and they're rats, and it's so weird. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> like as long as there's nothing like dumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, cause most of like Starfinder species, you're like that's sick. Like, that's badass. So there's, like, these, like, elven dudes, and there's, like, these, like, reptilian kind of Trandoshan ones. And most of them, you're like, that's awesome. And then you get to the, the rat, the rat one, and you're like, why? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we decided that there's multiple species, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, all right, yep. all right, all right. So species and role, and mm. then your, your minor role. Yeah. Your sub and then I, I, I think in um, in longer extended campaign play, like just at certain milestones, you can just choose a new minor role. But I feel like there isn't like levels or progression in this game. Yeah, I agree. Like you, you choose mechanic, you choose from the perks. That's your mechanic for the game, and like you, and then like you can minor in maybe like a technician or like a pilot, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's then it for the game. Past that is like. You know, equipment you pick up along the way, or something like that. There's no like abilities. Yeah, it's it, it, it's yeah, it's very it's very minor. Yeah. In that regard. Yeah. Well, you okay. Don't have to be minors. Nice. Okay, let's talk. Uh, and I'm okay if we go a little over an hour for this one because like, <laughs> this is a big topic. <laughs> um, that's cool. Can we kind of talk blanket system when it comes to some dice and also like. How do ability scores and skills, like, the equivalent of that work? Hit points, that deal. How, 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 because that also ties into the dice system, like, how do we want to go about that? Alright. Mm, I think it's fine to have a normal array of characteristics, and then... I don't think we need to get too complicated or different with how skills work. You know? Sure. I, I, I just don't know if, 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 like, you know, like, kind of a pseudo, like, D&D &D list of skills works super well in this, just because, like, that's what the roles are already for. Mm-hmm. In a way. Yeah, is there, like, a different way we can do that? Because otherwise that just feels kind of weird. We could... Also... Oh, oh, so go ahead. 
have your essentially what your quote unquote like attributes or characteristics or whatever decided by your uh, class, your species. Or species, yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> then your career gives you a bonus to you know, an applicable score or what have you for that role. Mm hmm. Let me come back to how does, like, is, here's, what's here's, the dice system? Yeah. Here's an idea, okay? Uh, let's say the dice system is a bit uh, simplified in this instance, okay? Let's say you have six ability scores, okay? And everyone has their right, and everyone has their strength and weaknesses, and you don't have skills, though. So, like, any kind... Let's just... We'll use the D&D &D yeah. ones for now, as an example. If any kind of dexterity-related thing... Acrobatics, stealth, sleight of hand, you just roll a dexterity check. You know what I mean? Like, it's not specific to a skill. And then, during character creation, you kind of have, like, back like your background... How do I explain this? Like, you have a list of, like, backgrounds, I guess? And, like, if that applies... Um, there's this game that I kickstarted called uh, Broken Compass, which is kind of like a Tomb Raider, Uncharted, like, that kind of adventure-themed RPG. And so, like, it has those kinds of, like, like descriptors about your character and about their experiences. And, like, if it's applicable to a role, like, you get that bonus. Mm -hmm. And, it and like, is that also, can that, like, be tied to the profile and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Make it a, a little looser in that sense where the player can be like, hey, this my character has this specialty or experience from their background that allows that... I think they should get a bonus on this, and James like, sure, I guess it's applicable. Alright, so how about we have... Each background gives them some sort of yeah, experience, which can factor into some roles where like oh because I have this sort of experience from my background I get this bonus to my role right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah but I'll, I think it's like open yeah yeah, yeah. like there's I, I'm not like, saying, like yeah like like yeah they're like they're suggested ones but like you come up with your own yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah okay. it's not like it's like oh I just I get a plus one to mechanics yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I like that. I like that. So, in the hypothetical rule book, there's like, here are some, you know, base backgrounds. Feel free to create your own blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but I'm saying, like, yeah, can, can we also tie that into the, the, like, the personality side of character creation? Which is, like, the, I, li I li really like the concept of the profile, by the way. Um, because, like, then everyone can kind of see, like, a list of like their past emissions or you know what I mean like yeah and that can provide them with some of these bonuses but then also you know some are a lie or however we're gonna figure that out um also uh idea mm -hmm. don't know if this works but in, for the characteristics right the common way to go is they are representations of actual the range of your capabilities in your physical strengths, your mental prowess, your intellectual capability, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the other option, I think, which is used much less, is like the characteristics are abstract representations of like themes in a sense. Let me give you an example. Okay. Because <laughs> that's a bad description. Um, so like in... I've been, like, just fiddling with, like, a Norse Mad Max RPG on the side. But for that, the characteristics are um, fire, iron, blood, shadow, and spirit. Mm. And so fire is just a representation of, like, your, uh, your bravery, your emotion, your ferocity. Iron is, like, your, um, your endurance and your patience and, like... 
you know what I mean? It's not like iron is constitution, like, it's also, like, a representation of, like, the mental, your mental iron, right? And, like, shadow is, like, deception and within, you know, things like that. So, Without like being, iron like, sword. an actual... Sorry? So, like, iron sword. Kind of. But, uh, Yeah, yes. I also, though, feel like iron sword is also kind of, like... Like, iron is your strength, and constitution edge is your dexterity. But sure, like that. Yeah, I mean, like, it, with that system, it kind of is like that. Like, sure, this means, like, this is what you roll for those strength kind of things, but it, it also is this. Right, know? right, right. So, for example, in, um... Within, like, your social skills, like, you use fire to intimidate, shadow to deceive, spirit to guide, iron to reason, blood to charm, um, and then in the information-based skills, fire is your survival, shadow is your cunning, spirit is your judgment, iron is your recall, blood is your observation. So, you know what I mean? Like, they're all kinds of things. And, like, in the physical sense, fire is, like, your physical force, shadow is your stealth, spirit is your vigilance, like, your mental... Resistance, iron is your endurance, blood is your finesse. You know what I mean? So like they're mm -hmm. they fit into kind of each category. They're not just like this is a physical skill, this is a mental skill, things like that, if that makes sense. I don't yeah. know, that's a way to go. We could definitely do that. Uh it's a little bit harder coming up with names for a setting that is less mm. How, what am I trying to say? entirely sure how to put what I'm trying to say into words, but I, I yeah, that can yeah. work. That can work. Uh, and, and, yeah, and just in that sense, like, characters are just, like, not defined by a click. I just, I don't know. I feel like that also makes the characters, like, more unique and stuff. How so? I don't know how it factors into uniqueness. I, I, I mean, sorry, I, I mean, like, in the sense of, like, you can make a mechanic that really varies in this sense, rather than, like, yeah, all the mechanics, I'm going to put my highest in intelligence. You know what I mean? Hmm. Well, I think that depends on... how... like, quote-unquote, skill checks work and how roles yeah. work. Because if you can put your highest into whatever you want and still be a mechanic, what do you roll to do repairs? What do you roll to... You right, know, change but, this thing about the engine. Yeah, but yeah, that's what I mean. Like it's it's kind of maybe like your approach in a sense to things, because like in the like it's social is like you're trying to accomplish some kind of you know social something. But you use your fire if you're int using int intimidate them. You're using your shadow if you're trying to deceive them, or like your blood if you're trying to charm them. Iron if you're trying to reason with them. Like it's your approach to the. That makes sense. I mean, that's not. I guess that can't totally be true in every single circumstance. Um, with skills, but like, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. How about this? How about this? What if part of character creation is choosing your like your singular uh, approach? Whether you call it like your attitude or your approach, or your method, or something like that, that determines your, would essentially be, like, your highest characteristic, you know? Mm-hmm. And that is basically your highest characteristic, and everything else is, like, on a level, like, playing field, on, like, the same level. You have this one thing yeah. that you one way that you're really good at doing things in that way, you know? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. And it can okay. apply to, like, it, you can be a mechanic in some time, but some mechanics are more focused on being this, you know, logical, uh, checking boxes, yeah. this, 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 go through all the list yeah. of things. Other things like, I've got the idea, and I'm going to be assertive yeah. about it, and... More like, more like a hot-headed, jury-rigged, risk-taking yes, kind yes, of mechanic. Yes. 
Yes, yeah, and but they're both can be equally good as that, even though they favor different. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Hear me out. A big part of character creation is also like I really love this profile idea. Okay. So when you like figure out the scores of your characteristics, right, mm -hmm. and whether you have like high fire or whatever, and then like because then everyone writes their own profiles, so like you can have like a note like some like disobeys orders, like acts out yeah. of emotion, or like is cold and like you know what I mean, like. All these, like, notes that the government or whatever has, like, made on their profile. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, their captain or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think that's really fun. And then, and that also definitely, like, reflects their, their, abil their ability scores, right? Or whatever they're called. Yeah. Okay, this is good. This is, <laughs> this is good. This is really good. <laughs> yeah, I really, um, I really like this idea, like, the, the profile idea. I think it's fun, interesting, and is a good way of introducing yourself to the party you know yeah yeah that's that's it's a lot of fun um okay dice dice hit me with your dice with what your thoughts on dice hit me with your best shot hit uh, me with your best shot doo -doo, that wasn't that wasn't an invitation all right sorry <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I can I hit you with my, my Sure, sure. Shot. Go for it. Go for it. Fire away. In the in the theme of things are like resources are scarce. Mm -hmm. Things are going wrong. I do think ki some kind of advantage threat system is works for that. You know, it's like yeah, you were able to sh successfully hit the attacking alien with your laser gun, but the laser passed through its shoulder and hit the glass behind it. You know what I mean? And now water is seeping in. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that kind of concept, I think works well to create new side problems and you know all this like yeah you hit with the laser gun but the gun jams now you can't use it anymore yeah it's a ton of minor storytelling and problem solving that gets done um but we also have to figure out the uh, opposite of that is what if they roll things and they get extra good things what can the players do with that right yeah i mean and then we, yeah i mean good stuff as well <laughs> You know, critical hit them if it's an attack, or not only do you convince them to, you know, allow what like allow them to pass through their territory. They're also like, why don't you take these horses with you, or you know, whatever it is, right? Um, I mean, obviously things going wrong is more fun, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> things going right we can also uh, do as well. Obviously, um, status effects are for both of those, you know, good and bad. Whether you're inflicting them or getting inflicted by them. Um, a other concept for a dice system, uh, a push your luck, I think could also work kind of well in this, uh, concept, because it's like, do you keep going mm -hmm. and see if you can get an even better success at the risk of a devastating failure? Do you like remember that heist RPG we were trying to put together once? Kind of. had some sort of idea for a push your luck system. I don't remember what it was. I don't, it was bad. I remember it was dragged out the game. Okay, this is a while ago. Sorry. Yeah. It was like a. I remember. Uh, no, I remember it was. It was like a fun concept. Luck system. Just like, yeah, because you know it's like we're dra we're on, we're doing ship battle and like we gotta retreat. Like we can try to push the ship past its limits to okay, okay, zoom okay. out of here. It, but what the if, engine might blow. Yeah. You know, we get, go something like a D10 system. Okay. Maybe okay. Sense as well. I don't know. Sort of system. Sure. What? It does, and doesn't you know, really matter. Like but... your target number. You don't have like a ton of different things that are adding onto your roll. Like it's some way well. of choosing to roll more dice at the cost of increasing the target number. Well, I think that's like canceling itself out. It's maybe like rolling more dice 
but if you do roll a one, something bad happens. But normally, rolling a one doesn't do anything. You know what I mean? No, my head my headphones got unplugged. <laughs> okay, like. Did you hear anything you can... that I said? Yes, I heard what you said. Yeah. Okay, 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 good, 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 good. I I, I was just saying that like it, rolling more dice but increasing the difficulty is kind of canceling itself out. But like. No, no, no maybe rolling like... dice increasing the difficulty and having. Like, each time you, like, get to that number, you know, it's like an extra, like, hit or whatever. What have you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I was gonna say was, like, rolling more dice, but if you roll a one, bad thing happens. But, like, normally if you roll a one, nothing happens. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Where there's, like, that kind of chance, but you have a higher chance of succeeding, but also now there's a chance of bad thing happening or something like that. And that also kind of works into the uh, advantage threat kind of deal, maybe. I was thinking like I don't know. Once again, we, we don't have to develop a full on dice <laughs> right now, but just like the the concept of it. The concept of it. Yeah. Yeah. What if the characteristics determine how many dice, like the max amount of dice you can roll for a check of that type? You know. Sure. And what I had in mind was, say the target number is, you know, six. And you've got like sure. a three in this attribute, so you can roll up to three dice. And if you get one success, then you succeed. But each addi additional roll, whether it is positive or negative changes not the outcome but like a side thing that happens does that make sense so kind if you of, get yeah i kind of i kind of see what you're saying you, you roll three dice and you succeed you get at least one seven but the other two fail so it's like you get two you know disadvantage or do drawback sure 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 yeah 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 Again, this doesn't need to be a fully fleshed dice system. Yeah, sure. Good for now. We have the we have the concept down of kind of what we want to happen. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Uh, anything special like equipment wise you want to talk about or like ship customization maybe during character creation that can make some things unique and stuff. Yeah, I'd love to have it where choosing your ship is more part of character creation, where it's not just yeah, for stylistic reasons. I definitely agree. Yeah. We can choose one to fit the situation, and mm -hmm. they operate differently, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of mm -hmm. unanswered questions of how exactly that would work. How would these ships operate differently than just like making the same sort of check kind of thing? Perhaps it's some sort of mini game. I don't know, but I like the idea no, that yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Choosing a different ship matters. It's not just for looks. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like how many engines it has, and like all that kind of stuff. Because I feel like a lot of stuff happens in the ship as well. And so, like, the kind of rooms it has and the layout of those rooms and stuff, like, matters during an exciting scene. So you can, like, use one of your, like, your movement or whatever during your turn to move to a different room, right? Um, like, if you're the mechanic, you gotta get to the engine room to fix the thing, and then maybe your ship, by the, because the ship you chose, you have, like, a laboratory where you're researching the things that you just took from the planet. You know what I mean? Like, there's all these different things going on. Mm -hmm. And, like, your, your ship should, like, help define, like, that layout, I think is a lot of fun. Also, it helps define what resources and the amount of resources that you are going to need to keep the ship running. Mm -hmm. Where a ship with more engines with better, I was going to say horsepower, that's probably not a thing. <laughs> Cthulhu power. Cthulhu <laughs> 
power. It might be like faster or be able to carry more, but it requires more fuel and more maintenance, perhaps. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I agree. Cool. Sounds good. Um, equipment wise, I want to create a, quite a lot of unique items just because, once again, I want every time you play to feel different. I don't want weapons to feel really like repeatable and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, look, we don't have to dive into that. No. I just think that's important. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Have your own um, equipment. Okay, I think we should end on, I mean, do you want to talk about like action economy at all? I don't know if that's super important. But, like, I think that hmm. I mean, I don't think I mean to get too fancy with it with like a reaction system. I don't think we necessarily need that. Perhaps just like an action maneuver. Kind of sure, deal, whatever. you know. Yeah, pretty action basic. Plus action. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Path of Second Nation's three action system is really glorious. <laughs> it is. Um, but and I think if you can get that to every work, single RPG, I don't think. Yeah, but I think if we could get that to work, like that's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. It's so nice. Um, okay, I think we should end on the personality kind of part kind of figure out the rest of like what this kind of profile is mm -hmm. how it works i like like that the first session is just character creation and sh choosing ship and spending your budget on the fuel and the weapon you know i mean like that i think that's a lot of fun mm -hmm. but uh, aside from the mechanical sides of a character sheet what is the uh the juicy role play bits that we can mechanically fit into this the into the game you know kind of like how dnd has uh, bonds and flaws and stuff but mm -hmm. probably more in depth than that and better <laughs> and important i'll say yeah so we have the profile written as if it's from the perspective of a commanding officer or superior or what have you so there's gonna be observations about the character you can have plenty of fun with jokes and things that you write in to describe your character as someone else past like past experiences yeah. like battles they fought in or like missions they've done stuff like that mm -hmm. and that helps make it easier to understand to believe the the you know x amount of truths in one lie yeah so Where yeah, for, for, for like that an observation system. of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, so I think we could do something like that. Um, what about kind of like more secret stuff, like motivate your character's motivation, or um, maybe there's like a whole table for rolling for like everyone secretly rolls for some kind of thing that drives them or thing that they want, maybe. Um, also, can we do like a... There is one of the characters your player is friends with and likes, and another character you hate, or whatever, to like just immediately get like a a role, a fun role playing kind of scenario just going straight off the bat. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've seen that in a game before, but I can't say what. Um, yeah, we could have some sort of thing where at some point people is like a randomly chosen relationship like you could roll to see okay what is my re character's relationship with your character if you don't want yeah. to choose it you can like randomize it and roll it to get things rolling you know get things going mm -hmm. and like one positive relationship one negative relationship or something yeah 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 Cause I, I could once again throw off the bat I just feel like that throws in immediate like role play like things that are established which I like yes um, because it's a shorter way of playing in like D&D &D, like you the party meets for the first time and over time you guys learn what you like about each other and what you hate about each other right 
but you don't have that time. So just tossing that in. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This, this is, I kind of want to play this game now. <laughs> So once again, kind of reviewing big picture stuff, like what are you doing? You are going on expeditions. You're delivering things as a crew, working together as a crew through fights, through on-world and off-world encounters, mm -hmm. fulfilling your role in a ship as the pilot, the engineer, the gunner, the medic, the this, the that. To keep everything running, you're managing resources, Picking up resources from planets along your journey, from trading posts, from this and that, having all sorts of, of different encounters, using your abstract abilities to find answers to the solution, risking more to get more. And hopefully surviving to. Yeah. Tell, tell the chance to get it on your profile. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also do like the concept that you can bring back characters, and now they have a new thing on their profile. Um, that's also kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I think, yes, yeah, stakes. I would say is a pillar of what this game kind of sounds like. So, your, you, like, your expedition or your journey, whatever it is, has a time limit. Uh, you know what I mean? You have to do this in four days. You know, like, 1917, you have to deliver the message to the army before they suicide, and, you know what I mean, in the 24 hours. Like, there's a, some kind of stakes in, in time limit, or what's going on. There's always uh, stakes in, on your ship, are you going to run out of resources, can you, like, I always, okay, also, like, that ties in basically to, like, decisions. I always want there to be hard decisions. Like, if you stop on this world to get the things you need to repair your shields, it will make it so you can fare better in your next space battle, but will chop off, like, three hours of your journey. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Of your time crunch. Like, all those kind of choices. Do I go and repair the engines, or do I try my hand at finishing off the last few enemies? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I like that, especially in the, you know, whole party scale of... Do we stop here, get resources, do repairs? This takes time off of our yeah. journey, which means we need yeah. to get through the obstacles that are coming towards us at a greater speed. It prompts discussion and stuff like that, which is always good to have. Yeah. Uh, final thing, any notes on like this world that Oof, you think uh, goodness. you want to talk about? There's so many ways we could go with this. We haven't talked about world building whatsoever yeah it's all it's, it's almost this podcast is almost 90 minutes so i do want to cut it off soon but because <laughs> like i think one way to go is to be like a, a kind of a, a bountiful uh you know really civilized populated kind of civilization yeah there's like uncivilized planets and stuff that you, they might travel to and stuff that's an idea or like more of like apocalyptic like kind of fight for survival it's very cutthroat uh, everyone is low on resources kind of deal uh, there's like government run there's like um, run by corporations and factions yeah I different ways to go with this I am thinking that this is set in a time period where to, re to give like an example uh It's like the Wild West of the Space Frontier. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It's the Wild West of the Space Frontier. The... Lawless. Kind of... Unexplored. Yeah. People are starting to branch out, but it's not fully explored and populated yet. Mm-hmm. There's... there's no, like, overarching government or anything, but there's, like, nations who are have some conflicts maybe and there's like corporations who have their own ulterior motives and stuff like that mm -hmm. and you're the you know like you're like the writers the boot with the mail you know 
the railway system isn't set up yet. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that just lends itself also to, like, just a ton of different kinds of stories. Yeah. Which are really good, because, like, they can be, like, a pretty urban kind of deal um, in, like, one of the more, like, civilized core planets or, like, really, you know, exploration-y, uncharted deal in, like, a frontier planet or, like, having to deliver a message or explore the, figure out the mystery of, like, why this base went silent or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's fun. I think it's a fun setting. That's good. People yeah, 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 love yeah. being able to explore things that they've never seen before. So why mm -hmm. not have the characters be also in that position? This is good, dude. This, this, is, this is good. This episode turned out like way better than I thought it would. <laughs> I, I, I thought it would be like a lot of us just like being silent, just, huh. Huh. <laughs> but I feel like that was a pretty like nice... I mean, in 90 minutes, we came up with, like, a game, like, Loki. <laughs> <laughs> a decent amount of stuff. Yeah, and I would want to play the heck out of this. And I think I think we should make this, like, a series. Like, I'd love to do this more. Whether it's wanna, yeah, detailing yeah. this specific game more, or coming up with mm -hmm. more ideas and trying to do what we did this episode. Okay, okay. Here, Here's my suggestion. Mm-hmm. I think we bang out a couple more of these, like, conceptual ones. Mm -hmm. Maybe we get a randomized prompt or whatever. Yeah. You know, we can yeah. figure out fun ways to do it. And then after we do a couple, maybe we can vote on one or choose one that we really want to dive into. Yeah, that sounds really fun to me. Yeah, that's... <laughs> okay, that's... And then get some guests on for different things. Yeah. And, you know, talk about... Get other people's opinions and stuff as well. Um... Uh, that is really cool. Okay. So then I guess the final thing for this is what's the name of this game? Before we go to closing, Gabe, we got to find out the name of this game. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, what, what does the name need to evoke? I think it needs to evoke the feeling that we were, that we were just talking about of this space frontier is starting to be explored yeah fr but not frontier fully yet. sounds like the right word that mm -hmm. feels like it's gonna fit somewhere in the title for sure and we can't use final frontier obviously sadly <laughs> no it's a good name I was, uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> um do we want to evoke like the kind of like teamwork part of it like uh, the fact that it's sci-fi Yes? Like, yeah, yeah, I guess so. I don't know what name, what word would bring that out, though. Okay, we're, we're, we we got to come up with this for, in, like, 60 seconds, so this doesn't have to be amazing. Okay. But it has to be, it has to be good <laughs> enough mm -hmm. <laughs> that it's not lame. <laughs> mm. I mean, like, Wayfarers. I feel like that kind of evokes like a ex exploration. It's a group of people exploring and discovering things. Um, you could also go with like more of like a like a sentence kind of deal, like at the frontier or something. Mm -hmm. Or we could do like a play on like the Wild West, but space you know yeah yeah that's it. i was trying i was trying to think of like a a pun or something you can do with mm -hmm. that but i don't know dead space ah oh, crap that's already a thing <laughs> um <laughs> oh. oh we just call it um <clears throat> Uh, passengers at the edge of the empire, mm, I think is a perfect. good... Perfect. <laughs> Our listeners have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> um, but, like, could, yeah, could you do, like, Wayfarers at the edge of the frontier or something like that, you know what I mean? Kind of like a subtitle -y deal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are we thinking too hard on this? This is, this is We're thinking way too hard on but... this. 
Yeah, let's go with that. Wayfarers at the edge of the frontier. Okay. Uh, or at the frontier or at something. The frontier. At the frontier, yeah. Edge and frontier are kind of the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> redundant. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for listening. That was a experimental and fun one. Yeah. That, that turned out, like, way better than I thought it would. I thought it would be very, like, kind of clunky and stuff, but that was cool. Yeah, And I hope fun. that's something that's interesting to listen to as well. And, and also, once we figure out maybe, like, if we're starting with a prompt or whatever, like, that could also be, like... More of an enticing deal, like, oh, I want to listen to this one where they try to make a, you know, like, a, a cowboy RPG or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but I think I would say that was a pretty good first run. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so if you want to see more of this, obviously let us know, please. We want interaction. Follow <laughs> us on Instagram, at t20 underscore academy. You can message us there, comment on our posts, get into our Discord, where you can message us directly and tell us what an amazing podcast we are and how much you <laughs> love listening to each one of our episodes and how we don't yeah. ramble on whatsoever. We're always concise and to the point. Yeah, and, and tell us uh, your own prompts and what kind of games you want to see or which ones you really like and you want to see us actually build and like dive deep into. Yeah, if you have like a crazy collection of ideas and themes that you think would be fun to theoretically make an RPG out of, Send them to us. That'd be fun. Yeah, be cool. that's a lot of that's that's pretty cool. Um, and hey guys, next week, uh, not next week, two weeks, next episode, I'm pretty sure is the class spotlight on the ranger. Really? Which I think so. Which we love the ranger. Rebuild, sure you rebuild, guys. not spotlight. Oh, I'm spotlight. excuse excuse me, rebuild. But listen to the class spotlight on the ranger because that's one of our best episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and that will kind of give you an idea of how we will be approaching this rebuild. Because, <laughs> uh, boy, does this class need to be rebuilt. All right. Look forward to that. Yeah. Until next time. Play a space mystic cowboy in the Wild <laughs> West. <laughs> yes, dude. Okay, wait, wait. Should that be our next game? It's a mystic game. <laughs> <laughs> That's the prompt take the mystic and turn that into an rpg low-key though psionic themed rpg mm -hmm. like not a not a bad idea okay guys we'll see you next time bye-bye bye-bye